Hello, hello, I'm here in Cologne and I'm looking at the Fuji Film X-T3. There's full frame, there's fuller than full frame, but forget that because we're going to stay with crop and we're going to show you why. This is their new camera, the X-T3. Oh yes, and I think I need a pee now. It's a big pissing spouting cock. Look at that. The wetness, moisture on the standpoint of water. That's really wet. As you've just figured out, I'm here today with Locke. We're both filming a review of the X-T3. We've both got X-T3, we're not sharing the X-T3. We not don't us. share. We, we have to return it. Yeah, like, yeah. Not like it's not ours. So yeah, this is a Sunday in Cologne. On the Sunday, not many things are open. And therefore, people aren't really around. So if you want to do street photography, Sunday's probably not a great day. We'll see. It's, it's looking pretty dead at the minute anyway. This year, everybody seems to be going full frame, but Fujifilm is saying, nah, you know what? APS-C is still pretty good. And they've really beefed this up, the X-T3. It's almost as good as the X-H1, if not better in some situations. So yes, it's quite mind-blowing how much stuff they put in the X-T3, which I'll go into in a minute, but it's a 26 megapixel sensor inside, two more megapixels in the X-H1 and X-T2, but the body is actually quite similar to the X-T2. Yes, it's got two card slots, that's the important thing, guys. And then we've got the tilty flippy screen. Oh no, it doesn't flip. It doesn't flip. It doesn't do the selfie. And it does, it, it, it does that, eh? There, there you go, it does that for, for gangster style shooting. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, anyway, let me show you what else it's got. That rear 3.2 inch screen is touchy feely now, but the body itself feels a lot like the X-T2, which is a good thing. Although there are some subtle tweaks, the dials are redesigned slightly. If you notice very carefully the X-T2 dials were straight up, the X-T3s are slightly slanted for better ergonomics. An exposure comp dial has been sized down further away from the edge so you don't accidentally knock it. It's the little details that count, but there are some BAM in your face improvements too. It's got the latest processor, which is which is quite amazing because the X-H1 has got the same processor as the X-T2. So this has got better stuff when teamed with the BSI. That's not bullshit inspector. It's backside illuminated sensor. It'll be better at low light, but also in terms of the auto focusing, it's better. And it's got more focus points. The focus points almost reach to the full edge of the sensor, if not the full. Is it full? Remember, Pretty full. 425 points compared yeah. to XX1 only got 325, so yeah, 100 I mean, more. That's crazy. And, and, then the, and then the burst rate, 11 FPS mechanical shutter, 11 FPS on the XH1, but that was with the battery grip. And then the electronic shutter, if you use electronic shutter, it's, it's 30 FPS, isn't it? Yeah. 30! Which is a 1.25 1, 1 times crop, is that right? Something, like, Something that. like that, yeah. But that's mind blowing. Mind blowing. 30 FPS, that's video. Yeah. You're just shooting video basically. Just a 26 megapixel video. <laughs> yeah. How many Ks is that? Lots of K. K. There's a lot of K. 12. <laughs> The new process is central to all the newfound goodness. It's about three times quicker than XT2 at processing the clever stuff. I mean, you're probably asking what is the difference then between this and X-H1. X-H1 is a more robust body, thicker magnesium alloy body, and it's got a top LCD screen. So there you go. But this has got better battery life than the X-T2 and also the X-H1. You get more shots, not a huge amount more. It's still not the best battery life, but you can add a battery grip if you really want to. It sounds like a complete package for still shooting, which is nice. While still photography hasn't been made completely obsolete, shame there aren't many subjects to take photos of, though. There's not a whole load of things we can take photos of, Locke. No. This is, this is, uh, this is, this is, oh Christ. Not open, just goes to show that he does take a day off on Sunday. <laughs> Come on, Cologne, entertain us. There's a car park there, that's interesting. It's got like more than one story. Burger King. Oh, okay. If all else fails, entertain yourself. 
is a house full of cocks. Cock house! Kunstler house. Just shot, just shot that one from the hip. Because I saw the screen wasn't even on and I just thought, okay, yeah. hold a button, hold a button. I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna have time to, to eyeball that one. Let's see if it's in focus. Slightly off, but I shot it blindly. The autofocus point probably wasn't even on her. Right, nothing on the street, but I do not want to bloody end up at the cathedral again because we always end up going to the cathedral. Been there so many times last time and this time as well. Just do not want to go. Let's not go there, okay? Yeah, anyway, AF. You've, you've got the options of face detection and IF. I've got this face detection and IF. Yeah, this is really good. Focus is fantastic. Super quick. The AF is apparently 1.5 times faster than XT2 and sensitive down to minus 3 EV. Too low than before. Coupled with the sophisticated AF features, not sophisticated in the sense that it listens to classical music or goes to the opera or stuff like that. And we've got a decent AF package going on. But anyway, I've got this with IAF and also face detection on and it's really quick. The focus is fantastic. It feels so responsive, so snappy. I don't know why I just find it funny that people want to take photos next to fountain, but I just do. Yes, I'm a tourist botherer. It's not high octane stuff, but the camera still has to act as quick as I want it to when I see an expression in the moment. Every split second counts. Timing is everything and the X-T3 doesn't hold things up. You've got interesting manual focusing aids such as this new micro prism that is anything but microfied. Anyway, with such good autofocus, it's something that I'd rarely use anyway. Low light focusing is pretty acceptable and noise performance, well, take a look and see what you think. But I think it's good up to 12,800. I mean, the XC2 is great, I'm not saying it's a bad camera, but it, it feels fantastic when you, you're taking a shot and it's just like boom. Done. I can't Golden bag. Exactly. Remember what's like XT2. I, I thought it's quite quite the same. Quite similar, but I mean, as I said, I don't have the XT2 in my hand, mm. so it's hard to say if side by side if it, it, it could be exactly the same. But it feels it feels great. It is great. Yeah. And the thing is, this is this is not too expensive a camera. Yeah. The XH1 is kind of priced closer to full frame cameras to the a7 III, but this is, this is, this is a bargain in comparison. It's almost insane that Fujifilm has released something that performs as good as their flagship camera. So how do they actually differ then? Well, the, the shutter is definitely not as quiet as the X-H1. The X-H1 is like... The X-H1 is really quiet. It's like, it's like a little a silent but violent fart. It's like... But this is this is, it's it's there. You can you can hear it's taking a shot. But I mean, I've got no problems with that. I mean, you can get really stealthy if you want to, but it doesn't really need to be that stealthy. It's already quite quiet. Of course, another key difference is that XT3 doesn't have in-body stabilization. Here we <laughs> go. Fuji meetup. <laughs> Those are quite capable. These are is, these are fantastic. Yeah. This was not set up. Fuji will make up. Everybody we're meeting today. It's got a Fuji film. Oh, everyone got X. Wow, X two. Wow, wow, good choice. Three X there we are. Yeah. What the fuck? Three of them, of the three. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? That that could be the thumbnail. It just goes to show it, <laughs> the, the the amount of people we've bumped into, and they just happen to be using Fuji film. That there's that's it's a popular system. It's no wonder that Fujifilm are deciding to carry on with crop and also go with fuller frame because if they switch to full, frame. if they switch if they switch to full frame and they suddenly introduce a whole load of full frame lenses, the people who've invested in this system basically have to buy a whole set of new lenses. And probably really hard to get 11 FPS anyway. Yeah. It will. Yeah, it won't that's be true. As impressive, properly. So it just goes to show that there's still life in crop. And Fujifilm has just announced some more new lenses at Photokina, including a rather splendid F1 lens. Anyway, the X-T3 has plenty of performance perks, which ought to be tested out, really. So, in terms of autofocus burst rate, it sounds pretty good on paper, but in practice, what is it like? We're going to have to, we're going to, have to get a fast-moving subject 
Yeah. Me. He's quick, so quick he has flaps for downforce. You've got the other side, mate. Yes. On the bike? Yes. Two wheels. Let's go downhill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he found one. There we are. <laughs> and then up, up there. <laughs> AO speed and sensitivity can be customised to your scene or subject. I'm not photographing any leopards or go-karts, so I picked the lady running towards me. Close enough. Boost. Boost. Boost mode. Boost. <laughs> okay, so what does this do? This, this tightens everything up. Yeah, not, not everything, just on the camera. It makes it faster. Well, the, the viewfinder's got a faster refresh rate. Yeah, 60, but now at 100. I mean, normal 60 up to now 100. This is like like flicking a sport mode on your sports car. But of course, it takes up a bit more power, doesn't it? It takes a bit more quite juice. A lot, quite a lot. So I've got on tracking. I've got on wide AF tracking. So let's see how this competes against your, your wicked cycling skills. Okay, let's go. Here we are. From 11 FPS. 30 FPS. Of course, it's 1.25 times crop, but I can handle that. Okay, let's go. The 1.25 times crop might actually work to your advantage if you're shooting sports, not for whatever I'm doing here. <laughs> I don't know if it's just making that noise just to say, oh, hello, I'm taking a shot but it's making a little clicky noise there. That's pretty good. That tracking is good. Kind of quite affordable. It's not too expensive. It's not the X-H1. It even looks like a film camera. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's the kind of weird thing. It's this classically designed retro style camera. 30 FPS, that's just, uh, that's, it's, my, it's, it's crazy. Okay, so is that it? Oh! Not quite yet, but let's put the bike back first. <laughs> What's going on? Why don't you just leave it in one place? <laughs> he's already locked it. <laughs> he's already locked it. And he's just... I mean, what is this? He has, he's got to leave it in a nice, aesthetically pleasing way. I hope that's, I hope that's enough. Yeah, so we've established that it's a pretty good stills camera, but I think one of the big improvements with the X-T3 is in the video mode. X-T2 shot 4K, X-H1 shot 4K, X-T2 did it in crop though. This, no crop. That's pretty impressive. 4K, 60p, 10 bit. 420, but you know, I don't, I don't think that you're not going to see too much of a difference for things like YouTube. No. Probably more different between 8-bit and 10-bit if you're doing log file. Before we get to log, I want to say a turn of film simulation works great for video. The colors are beautiful and don't need much work. Great for fast turnaround, but you get less dynamic range. But if you do record externally, you are rewarded with a crispy file that just grades better. Fujifilm kind of like they never emphasize this is good for video, but they just like effortlessly just yeah win. But this is quite a sweet spot because although GH5 does 4K, 10 bit, um, 60p, 420 internal, this does the same, but it's got Super 35 sensor. Cinematography geeks, they'll be like, oh, Super 35, yeah, super 35, the, the micro, super micro super four thirds is, is not, is, uh, super, it's not Super 35, it's two times crop, isn't well, it? Well, mentioning about micro four thirds, also, this got really good dynamic range. It's this always, one. Uh, <laughs> when you compare the files from the X-T3 and the GH5, the X-T3 has slightly more dynamic range than the GH5. In, in terms of continuous autofocus, how are you finding it for video? Not sure yet. No. Oh. But to be honest, just from initial test, it, it seems quite reasonable. It, it seems yeah. quite quick. It's, it's quite snappy. It doesn't kind of, it doesn't seem, it's almost so quick. It doesn't do that whole smooth pulling into focus. It's just like, boom, boom. 
I did focus, focus. I did purposely for video shooting. I did pur purposely slow down the auto focusing. You can indeed change the speed and sensitivity of the video continuous AF also, which is in a dedicated video menu, but the AF still snaps into focus. I mean, the focus is quick and damn accurate, whether the subject be backlit or poorly lit. It just doesn't snap into focus in a smooth way. As mentioned before, it doesn't have IBIS, but for YouTube people, the 10 to 24 has OIS. You'll get a bit more shakes than a GH5, but much less than something with a bigger sensor. Also, the rolling shutter is quite low, a bit more than GH5, but very good in its own right. It looks like the only difference is that X1 got in body stabilization. Nothing else. Slightly more rugged body. Yeah, um, uh, quieter shutter. Top LCD screen. Top LCD. Oh wow, you're paying for that. <laughs> you're just paying for that. So, yeah, it is a bit weird that the XH1 is is the flagship, and, it, and there's quite a bit more, isn't it? More money, which is fine if you haven't bought it yet. But if you haven't <laughs> bought it yet, I, you should seriously consider one these. Yeah. Are you thinking of going full frame? Well, here's one reason not to. The Fujifilm X-T3 is possibly one of the best cameras of the year. It has the standard tasty Fujifilm colours and retro cool dials, but they've upped the game to make this a hot performer for stills and for video. It's a complete package. It doesn't have IBIS, but if it had that, it would make the X-H1 pointless. But now, the X-T3, you'll just have to make do with it making it almost pointless. Even with the older Fuji lens, so it's not a hardware, but it's a software. It's funny the way I'm sliding in like that. <laughs> <laughs> 